All right, guys, so uh, we're in the home stretch. We're gonna be building our recurrent neural network model, and we'll just kind of compare it against the convolutional model and why, why it kind of works or it doesn't work. Um, so let's start with, I guess I'll put it, I'll put it under the convolutional model. So everything's already set up. Um, I already built, like we've got config that'll let us switch between convolution and recurrent. And that, that's pretty good. Now we just need to define what is our, our recurrent neural network model. What does that look like? Um, so we're gonna do get recurrent two, there's not two C's in recurrent, but there's two R's. There we go. Uh, get recurrent model. Uh, so let's say model equal, again, we're gonna be doing sequential. And this is a lot easier because I don't have to add all the convolutional layers. Uh, so what we're gonna be using is called a long short-term memory unit. So it's just like a dense layer, but um, it's a long short-term memory unit. Uh, and the way this works is um, just like you'd have a dense, you, you've got some number of neurons in this layer, but uh, those individual neurons have the long short-term memory component built into them. And with recurrent neural networks, because they, they're meant to model features that change over time. So in our case, uh, the shape of our data is like what? It was a n by nine by 13. So I guess let's make a comment in here. It's like shape of data for RNN is uh, n, yeah, let's call it n by time by feet. So that's that's the shape of of the data that has to go into recurrent no neural network. So this is why we did uh, this transpose up here. I was making sure that the data is actually shaped such that the time component, so the the nine is is going to be time, and then the feature is going to be thirteen. So that's what our data needs to be shaped when it goes into this, um, just so you know. Uh, now we're gonna do return sequences. So uh, return sequences is like the output of the LSTM itself. Uh, you can kind of just return a, a 1D thing or you can return the actual sequences. Um, and the, the way this kind of works and if you do choose to return the sequences, you need something that's going to be, it needs to feed into a layer that can also accept that sequence or that extra time dimension that's being added on. Um, and I'll show you kind of how that works. Um, so at this point, generally, sometimes you can just get away with like, I would recommend just use one LSTM layer but you can stack LSTMs. I've seen people stack like three of them uh, for stuff like this, but yeah, it becomes, it becomes costly because the, the cost of optimizing a recurrent neural network and like actually updating the weights well within this LSTM is very, it's, it's much harder than to do back propagation through an LSTM than it is to do through the, the convolutional model. Um, just like just putting that out there. It's going to take a lot longer to train this model than the convolution uh, But granted it's still it's still made to model time sequence data It's just how it's modeling that data is what am I doing? Oh Why have I been putting model? Wow, I've been spacing out over here. Uh, we got to do model dot add. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was like, what am I what's going on? Uh, model dot add um, so just for consistency we're gonna add another 0.5 dropout between the the like time layer before like we theoretically flatten it out now we're not actually flattening it so because we're returning uh, sequences we cannot just do like you might be tempted to do uh, model dot add dense but we can't actually do this um, what we can do, because there's that time component, we can add a time distributed layer in Keras. So, um, and I, I can probably show you this easy, more easily when we actually look at the summary 
of the model. Um, but let's just create a, a time distributed, fully connected layer with 64 neurons. And the activation is going to be ReLU. And so at this point, I'm mainly just trying to get my dimensionality down. And we have to be a little more precise about how we pull this down because we're, we're working with these time distributed layers. So there's actually still a lot of um, weights that need to get optimized here. It might not look like it. Like we, we only have like 16, 32, like, oh, that's not a lot of parameters. But because we're in a time distributed layer, there's actually, uh, that gets multiplied by whatever your time density is for this. And okay, that looks good. Now we can actually flatten. So model.add, no, flatten. Oh, hello. Okay, there we go. And let's see, model.add dense. So again, this is going to be the output of our network. It's going to be a 10. Activation is going to be soft max. That looks good. And we'll do a model.summary, model.compile. So again, actually, why don't I just copy this? It's the exact same from the convolutional model. Uh, all right, uh, that looks pretty good. And I guess we'll do return model after we compile it. Okay. Um, let's see, let's check. That looks good, let's just run it. Um, so let's clear our stuff from the convolution and we'll do, oh, did I change it over? Nope, I didn't. Uh, so I'm gonna switch the mode to time. So hopefully this runs. Input shape, whoa, did I not set input shape? Mm -mm -mm. That's a problem. Uh, okay, so that's at least one error figured out. <laughs> okay, this looks promising. All right, so our data is running again. So I guess we'll talk about like with the recurrent neural network, what we're going to find is it probably takes a lot longer to train. Um, it, it doesn't, the way you want to think about this is like, if you were to look at an image and then you were just to look at one row at a time, uh, as like, as those, so what we have like nine, nine pixels in that either like row or column. And we just look at it one row until eventually we looked at all nine that's what the recurrent neural network's doing it's it's just making classifications by okay i'm going to look at this one row of pixels and i want to see like is there something i want to remember from this row of pixels to that i want to carry on into the next decision and that's what the recurrent neural network's actually doing so even based on that like definition that that seems like a much more difficult way it's like looking at a picture and you scan it over and you try to remember things based on what you previous see, previously seen versus just stepping back and taking a look at the whole picture. That's what convolution is doing. Um, so it's kind of interesting. There's, there's two different mentalities of how uh, these neural networks can train and think about data. Uh, but let's take a look at the, the shape of our data. Um, so if you noticed, we're returning like in the time distributed. That's where we're getting this nine from. This nine is getting carried down. The time is just getting carried down from layer to layer because we're returning the sequences. If we didn't return sequences, this nine wouldn't be here. But returning sequences lets us create more and more parameters and make our model deeper and deeper, which can be beneficial. And let's see. Yeah, so this network's actually only got 200,000 parameters compared to the convolution. And it's taking a lot longer to train. 
Um, wands is like 26 seconds, pretty long, and accuracy isn't really that great compared to like, you, you figured like, our convolutional neural network was at 65% after this first pass. And, and the recurrent neural network just isn't really cutting it, so <laughs> um, it, it doesn't really compare completely. Now, recurrent neural networks are still really good. Um, I could be just doing it wrong, but I, I don't think I'm that wrong. Um, but recurrent neural networks are actually really good with um, the short time Fourier transform. So if you want to actually reconstruct audio uh, notes or the entire like magnitude for like audio generation, like style transfer. Um, recurrent neural networks are actually, they have their use there. But I think for con like classification, convolutional neural nets, they might be better from, from what I've just been running data on my computer. So that's just my opinion on it. Um, and I think I'll just edit this to whenever this model's done and I'll just talk about it and that'll be the end. Okay, so our recurrent neural network has finished training, um, and it looks like it reached right around like 87% accuracy um, compared to the convolutional neural net, which got like 95% accuracy. Uh, also, you could factor in the fact that like the recurrent neural network took a lot longer to train than the convolution. Um, that's just the nature of L like trying to optimize LSTMs. It's very it just takes a longer amount of time to do that back propagation. So. Um, yeah, overall, it, it's pretty impressive for, for what it was doing, but it turns out the convolution is um, better from, from what I can tell for this classification. So uh, that's going to pretty much wrap up this, um, this whole tutorial on audio classification and really just starting to, just getting started with like audio modeling with machine learning. It's a very complicated a uh, whole kind of like niche field of machine learning. So uh, if you guys want to see some more machine learning stuff, um, leave a comment and tell me like what you guys want to see and I can probably work on it. Uh, pretty much like anything's on the board. We can do computer vision stuff. We can do more audio, um, but just let me know uh, because that'll give me an idea of what I can work on next. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. If you watched all the way through, good luck. I hope your project works. <laughs> um, and hopefully you learned something. Uh, this is the first video series I ever made, so I'm hoping it was good enough, and I'll be impressed if anyone actually watches it. So, um, but thanks for watching, guys.